A vagrant hustler, Stanton Carlyle, joins a carnival and steps up his act as a mentalist. Hell-bent on wealth and fame, the greedy man exploits people's miseries until a sinister psychologist turns things around. In a rundown house, Stanton pulls his father's sack corpse into a hole on the ground and lights it on fire before leaving. Afterward, Stan boards a bus and dozes as he reaches the last stop. A short-statured man catches his attention, so he follows him into a carnival. Amidst the fun-filled festival, Stan joins a crowd and enters the auditorium, where a ringmaster, Clem, introduces his exhibit of human freaks which he calls Geeks. Inside, Clem presents a grubby man inside a ring, whom he claims can live for weeks without food or drink. To feed the starving man, the ringmaster asks for additional payment from the audience and drops a live chicken in the enclosure. Seeing the livestock in front of him, the grubby man catches it and squints his eyes at the excited crowd. Hesitant yet starving, he bites off the chicken's neck, making the audience erupt in cheers. Horrified by the act, Stan Stan sees Clem's assistant Peach collect quarters from the crowd, so he quickly leaves the tent. Unaware, the ringmaster sees him escape. Outside, the short-statured man, Major, recognizes Stan and accuses him of stalking. However, his companion Bruno offers the vagrant a job for the incoming storm. As the rain pours, Stan helps pack up the carnival. Afterward, he receives his wage from Clem, who subtracts a quarter for his geek show. Stan doesn't contest and leaves with his stuff, but the ringmaster eyes his radio and offers to buy it. Moreover, Clem invites the vagrant down the road where the carnival will move. Moments later, the traveling group eats dinner before setting up a tent, while Stan eyes a beautiful lady. When a whistle blows, the carnies run to Clem's orders, who asks Stan to look for his runaway geek in the funhouse. Inside, the operator switches the attraction on and tells the newcomer to push the SKP towards the exit when he sees him. Wary of the creepy ornaments, Stan finds the grubby man at the corner and urges him to come out. However, the geek hits the vagrant with a rock and flees, but Clem blocks him. Cornered, the man runs to the exit, but Stan tackles him down and hits him repeatedly. Then, the ringmaster stops the newcomer and carries the wounded man into his cage. Clem tames the vicious man, who repeatedly cries he's not himself. Seeing potential in the newcomer, the ringmaster offers Stan a mattress to sleep on and offers him a job at the carnival, assuring him no one will care about his background. That night, Stan dreams of his burning house, and caresses his sickly father who reminds him of the grubby man at the auditorium. Early at the carnival, Stan watches the snake man practice his act, eyeing the beautiful lady Molly clapping at the flexible man. Shortly after, the vagrant heads to a bathhouse where he meets Xena, the owner, on the porch. Inside, Stan eyes the tarot cards on the table, learning the woman and her husband, Pete, are clairvoyants. When Pete leaves for town, Xena leads the newcomer to the bathtub and asks him to assist her mind-reading show, claiming his attractive look will draw a crowd. Then, the clairvoyant advances towards the bathing man and becomes intimate with him. Soon after, on Madame Xena's clairvoyant act, Stan collects letters from the audience, entertaining Molly particularly. He then pretends to hand Xena the envelopes, but she takes a prepared basket and burns the fake letters without seeing them. Meanwhile, Stan goes under the stage and wakes the drunkard, telling him about a random spectator's letter. Then, Pete writes the details on a chalkboard, which Xena reads beneath her feet. Using her fake supernatural ability, the mentalist calls upon the chosen letter's owner, Abigail, and addresses her concern, amusing the crowd. However, the drunkard fails to assist Xena's show, so the mentalist improvises, making the audience doubt her abilities. To say her act, she tells Abigail that her brother's spirit is beside her, which the emotional woman confirms. That night, Xena tells the truth to Abigail, since they don't risk spook shows, which makes the audience believe they communicate with ghosts. Instead, Stan challenges Pete to perform his act on him, which the elder man obliges. So Stan gives Xena his watch behind the psychic's back. Pete then describes the wristwatch in detail, revealing Stan stole it from his estranged father. Refusing to know more, the disturbed psychic finishes his act, leaving his guests sentimental. To relieve the atmosphere, here, Pete reveals a notebook containing the secret language system and cold reading techniques he used to convince Stan about his psychic abilities. Moments later, Stan witnesses the drunkard persuade Clem to give him a bottle of alcohol despite his wife's warning. Afterward, the carney helps the ringmaster settle his preserved jars for his exhibit, where he sees a preserved human fetus, Enoch, on a pedestal. Then, Clem shows Stan his boxes of alcohol and tin of money, warning his new help to never steal from him. The following day, Stan expresses his willingness to learn Pete's tricks, surprising the retired mentalist. At the carnival, the carney goes around and watches Molly's act as she withstands electrocution, bearing the nickname Electra. That night, Stan visits the encaged man and gives him his cigar. The next day, Stan eagerly shows Molly his idea on a sketch pad, suggesting to use an electric chair to intrigue more people. The woman praises his sketches but reminds him their talents won't thrive in the carnival. However, the optimistic carney believes Molly is special and returns to work. Sometime later, Stan sits Molly on the electric chair and shows Major 
how the rigged act works. Excitedly, the woman persuades her companion to try the newcomer's idea, so Major permits. While Stan jumpstarts Pete's truck, Bruno confronts and threatens the carny to stay away from his deceased friend's daughter, noticing they're getting closer. In a stormy night, Stan joins Molly in the carousel, who was awakened by a dream about her father. Learning the woman loves dancing, the carny switches the ride on and sways her to the music. Getting more intimate, Stan invites Molly to join him in a two-person act and swears to give her what she deserves. When the carny leans to kiss her, Molly hesitates and retreats to her room, smiling. In Clem's tent, the ringmaster shows Stan the dying man in his cage, so they drive him to a physician's store. Refusing responsibility, Clem rings the door and urges the carny to leave the sickly man. In a diner, Stan asks Clem where he got his geeks. The ringmaster reveals he lured drunkards with opium-laced alcohol, conditioning them to stay. Then, he gives them a live chicken which will completely turn the man into a geek. Later, Pete shares his tricks with Stan when they hear a commotion in the auditorium, insinuating the ringmaster found himself a new geek. Under the stage, Pete convinces the carny to fetch him alcohol from Clem, so Stan quietly pays for a bottle while the deranged ringmaster entertains his wife in his tent. Afterward, Stan finds Pete asleep and takes a peek at the mentalist's notebook. However, the elder man awakens and warns the carny about the dangers of his act. Pete claims he got a shut-eye, where he believed his own lies too much until it destroyed his perception of reality, endangering lives. Despite the elder mentalist's warning, Stan retains and practices bits of Pete's trick. The following day, the carny sees Xena rushing into the carnival. The crowd closes in on the poor widow, holding her husband's lifeless body. Shocked by Pete's sudden death, Stan immediately goes to retrieve the mentalist's book under the stage. Sometime later, Stan hears police cars approaching, so he immediately warns Clem, whose acts involve demented men. The ringmaster hides his geek while the chief orders to round up all carnies. Then, Stan bumps into an officer and snatches a warrant withholding their chief's name, which the deputy takes back. Meanwhile, Sheriff Jedediah reprimands the carnies' illegal activities and orders Molly to get off the electric chair. Faking panic, Stan tells the police to get down the stage, saying they might be electrocuted. Immediately, Major pulls the lever, transmitting the current to Electra and saving the deputies from harm. Then, Stan secretly winks at the woman as the act concludes. Horrified by the cruelty, the sheriff orders the carnival to shut down. Suddenly, the practicing mentalist calls Jedediah by his name and leads the confused man away while the carnies eye them curiously. Then, Stan uses Pete's cold reading techniques by analyzing Jedediah's body language and digging into his personal affairs. Eventually, the aspiring mentalist convinces the sheriff to be merciful towards them, just like what Jedediah's deceased mother would want. Ecstatic over his successful trick, Stan looks for Molly and finds her in Clem's tent. The woman claims she's ready to leave everything behind and be with him, but worries for Xena. Thrilled, Stan assures Molly the widow will be alright as they get intimate. Suddenly, Bruno and Major look for Molly, so Stan pulls his lover to escape. However, Bruno finds the two and punches Stan for disobeying his warnings. Molly reveals she loves Stan and wants to leave with him, leaving her two friends bewildered. The following day, Stan returns Pete's book to Xena, but the woman refuses, saying he earned it. Afterward, he boards his truck with Molly as they begin their life together elsewhere. Two years later, in a luxurious room, Molly studies the mentalist's book while Stan awakens by a recurring dream about his sickly father. The following day, Stan successfully finishes his first psychic act and scolds his lover and assistant for making a mistake as they return to their dressing room. In the second act, the renowned mentalist successfully describes the audience's item while blindfolded through Molly's coded sentences. Suddenly, a woman exposes the two frauds, revealing they're using verbal signals to communicate with each other. Although alarmed, Stan denies deception in their act, so the assertive woman challenges the mentalist to identify the items inside her handbag. Through cold reading, the actor describes a pistol inside the bag which turns out to be correct. Then, Stan claims the woman carries it to feel powerful as she takes her seat. However, the confronted man reads the woman's life to humiliate her, revealing she sometimes thinks to commit the unthinkable to herself. When Stan notices the woman's nervousness, he immediately turns to an elderly man, saying his deceased loved one is right beside him. To conclude, Stan acts unconscious, so Molly helps him up as the crowd cheers. In their dressing room, Molly confronts her lover about performing a spook show on the audience and urges Stan to tell the truth to the elderly man. Moreover, Molly reveals the woman and the man have been on their show before, who requests to meet afterwards. Moments later, Stan and Molly meet with the spooked man, Judge Kimball, accompanied by his psychologist, Dr. Lilith. The mentalist doesn't accept 
at private consultations, but makes an unexpected exception with a sentimental man since he's intrigued by the cunning doctor. Furious about her lover's careless decision, Molly marches away from Stan into a phone booth. The following day, Stan enters the building alone, rehearsing his lines before heading to Lilith's office. He notices the recording devices in the room and learns that the doctor records her sessions and locks the patient's tapes in her cabinet. Then, the mentalist compares himself to the doctor, claiming they're both running a scheme. The doctor wonders about Stan's act, so he explains his thought process as he narrows her bag's contents to a pistol and generalized a single woman's issues. Afterward, Stan proposes an alliance to take advantage of the wealthy politician by providing him little information about Judge Kimball. In exchange, Lilith requests for the truth about the mentalist's life, which he accepts. As they strike a deal, the doctor reveals the judge lost a son, Julian, who enlisted in the army against his mother's wishes and died on a desolate land. While Stan savors his fame, Molly phones Bruno, ensuring her safety and extending her love to her old friends at the carnival. In the doctor's session, Lilith emphasizes on Stan's strong aversion from alcohol and scribbles on her notes. When the troubled man lies on the bench, Lilith learns Stan might have caused his old friend Pete's death from alcohol, and he sees his alcoholic father in him. Haunted by his memories, Stan ends the session, claiming he won't ever be like his father. Going home, Stan sees a rabbit in the hallway and finds his old friends visiting their apartment, who were invited by Molly. As they enjoy each other's company, Xena tells the mentalist not to do the spook show, as shown to her by her tarot cards. Doubtful, Stan draws his fate instead with three cards, the tower, the lovers, and the reversed hanged man. This interprets that impending danger confronts him which needs an urgent decision so he won't fall into his selfish demise. But Stan shrugs the reading off. That Wednesday at Kimball's home, the mentalist talks with Julian's mother, Felicia, and continues his spook show with her son's ghost, claiming he awaits his parents in the afterlife. Afterward, the fraudulent mentalist offers half of his pay to Lilith, but the doctor refuses. Elated by his act, Stan tells her Judge Kimball requested him to consult his friend, which he considers accepting. Turning down the whiskey, Stan asks Lilith to hide the money for the meantime, so the doctor confronts his trust on a woman he barely knows, but Stan claims otherwise, enamored by the woman. In a dressing room, the mentalist and his assistant rehearse their act when Stan notices his downhearted lover. In a good mood, Stan invites Molly to dance after their show. Then, Stan answers the telephone where Lilith informs him about the judge's friend, the psychologist's former patient. The doctor warns dealing with the powerful and unstable man has severe consequences, but the arrogant mentalist takes the risk. In a heavily guarded mansion, Anderson leads Stan through the security. Shortly after, the mentalist meets Kimball's friend, the exclusive bureaucrat, Ezra Grindle. Grindle makes his guest sit on the chair to perform a lie detector test, surprising Stan. Despite his discomfort, the mentalist wears the straps as the evaluation begins. Stan passes the first two questions about his identity but bears negative results when asked about his psychic abilities. Before they figure out his lies, the mentalist interrupts the test by sensing a woman's presence in the room. Stan then reveals Grindle forced someone to miscarriage, which infuriates the bureaucrat. When Grindle convenes with his men in another room, the fraudulent mentalist sighs in relief. Afterward, Stan goes to Lilith's office, but the doctor refuses to go against a dangerously powerful man. Stan claims to understand the woman's reluctance as she goes to her private lavatory. Nevertheless, he secretly molds her keys on a casting tray to duplicate it later. Troubled, Lilith shows her guest a large scar on her chest, marked by her life's sufferings, so Stan kisses it in sympathy. Soon after, the stubborn man sneaks into the doctor's office with his duplicate keys and listens to Grindle's tape, learning about the lonely man's depression. So he investigates his beloved, Dory, in the archives, where he finds a picture of her and Grindle along with her unsent letters. In the bureaucrat's garden, Stan claims Dory loved Grindle dearly, along with their unborn baby boy, which deepens the elderly man's regret. Heartbroken, Grindle demands to see his deceased beloved no matter the cost, and hands the mentalist a large sum of money. Devising a plan, the con man checks the garden's lock before he leaves. In the doctor's office, Stan reveals his idea to stage a seance at night in Grindle's garden dedicated to his beloved. There, he will require Molly's help to pretend as Dory covered in blood, to avoid being examined. Charmed by Stan's determination, Lilith entices him to drink whiskey, his first alcohol, which he nervously downs. Soon, Molly reads Dory's last letter, so Stan shows her the image of the deceased woman on an old article, asking her to pretend to be Grindle's beloved. Suddenly, Anderson knocks on their door, so Molly gathers Dory's stuff and hides it. Calmly, Stan welcomes Grindle's man, who asserts his care towards his boss, warning the con man. Afterward, in Grindle's library, Stan stalls the bureaucrat's demand for a seance by reminding him of his grave sins. However, the impatient man erupts in rage, demanding to see Dory immediately and threatening the mentalist to deliver his expectations. Running out of time, 
Stan urges Molly to practice Dory's appearance according to his notebook and leaves to settle everything else. As Molly skims through her lover's sketches, she finds an unfinished drawing of Lilith's face, realizing that Stan was having an affair. Meanwhile, in Kimball's mansion, Felicia reminds her husband about the mentalist's words about reuniting with their dead son. Deranged, she shoots the judge dead and ends herself afterward. When Stan returns home intoxicated, he finds Molly's farewell letter and rushes after her to the terminal. Fortunately, he finds his lover, but she pushes him away and locks herself in a bathroom stall. Pleadingly, Stan asks Molly not to leave him like everybody else, so she gives in. That night, Stan picks the garden lock open and runs through the plan with Molly in the car. The woman agrees to do it, but tells him she'd had enough, like how numb her old job at the carnival made her feel. Moments later, the mentalist tells Grindle they'll need to be in solitude, so the elderly man dismisses Anderson. Then, Stan leads him to a bench and urges Grindle to close his eyes and ask Dory for forgiveness. Unexpectedly, the vicious old man confesses that he hurt many women through the years to vent his anger. Suddenly, Grindle sees Molly dressed as Dory along the path and embraces her. Meanwhile, Anderson hears the news about the Kimball's passing and goes to inform his boss. Overwhelmed, Molly pushes the grieving man away, so Grindle realizes that everything is just an act. As a result, the raging man slaps the woman, so Stan beats him to death as Molly retreats to the car. Arriving at the commotion, Anderson fires his gun towards the escaping con man and sees his master dead. Despite Molly's protest, Stan runs over Anderson, which instantly ends him. Shortly after, Stan parks the vehicle in an alleyway and smashes its windows to make it appear someone stole it. However, Molly slaps her lover and abandons him. With nowhere else to go, Stan goes to the psychologist's office to get his money. Suddenly, Lilith confesses her love before he leaves, which confuses the mentalist. Exposed, Lilith denigrates the greedy man and mocks him by recording their current session. Realizing he's being conned, Stan opens his case and finds his money washed down to ones. Lilith feigns ignorance about their deal and uses his personal affairs to his disadvantage. Suddenly, she shoots him with her pistol which grazes his ear, taking vengeance from being affronted during his show. Then, the doctor phones security for help and Stan strangles the woman with the cord. However, the security arrives, so the wounded man rushes to escape and hides behind chicken pens on a train. Back then, in Stan's house, he exposed his sickly father to the cold and removed his blanket, which led him to die from hypothermia. Presently, the con man falls into pits of despair as a drunkard together with some vagrants. He sees his old friend, Xena, in the newspaper and surrenders his father's watch to survive another day with his group. Stumbling upon a carnival, Stan sees the carny boss and finds the preserved Enoch and his old radio in the cabin, which the carny brought from a disbanded carnival. Then, Stan tries to sell his mentalism act on the carny boss, but the disinterested man sends the drunkard away. However, the owner changes his mind and offers the vagrant alcohol, telling him mentalists are outdated. He then pours Stan another drink and cautiously offers him a job as a geek. Recognizing Clem's technique on luring alcoholics, the miserable vagrant drinks the opium-laced alcohol, claiming he's born for it as he laughs and cries at the same time. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.